and then start our TOEFL lesson. Anybody there? Okay, yes, yes, it's pretty well. It's a good week. I'm glad it's a good week. That's good news to me. If you have a good week, I have a good week. <laughs> and can you get a PDF for my essays? Yes, I can work on that. I'll work on that today. Should be pretty easy to do that. Um, I can upload that, and I can put those somewhere that you guys can get them. Okay, I can relax finally. I'm in a computer lab. So what our computer labs. Normal computer lab full of computers. I'm gonna sit at the teacher's desk. I can sit at the teacher's desk. Okay. Lesson. Finally, I found a place we can hang out and relax for a little bit. <laughs> so, I want to talk to you first about my interview today. I want to talk to you about interviewing in the United States. Um, I know that interviews might be different depending on where you live, where you want to study, but I'm going to talk to you specifically about the U.S., the United States. So I'm going to set you up right there, and I'm going to talk to you guys. So let's go ahead and begin. But before we begin, I have some notes for you guys. Just give me two seconds. So I um, went this morning at 10 o'clock to my interview. I went this morning at 10 o'clock to my interview. And the first thing that happened, which was really funny actually, is my friend, one of my close friends, was the student who interviewed me, which was interesting. So I had trouble kind of separating him as my friend from someone who might be hiring me in the future, which was very nerve-wracking. It was very nervous. It made me very f nervous, kind of jittery, on edge, because I didn't know what to say, because he was my friend, but he was also um, someone who was interviewing me. And then I was also interviewed with the director as well. I, um, the director asked me questions. So I have some advice for you when it comes to interviewing. I have four things that are the main things that I personally think that a lot of students don't know about when they have a job interview. Um, they are ner either nervous and they forget to do these things or they just don't know to do these things. These can be used in the future if you already have a job but you never knew these things. These can be used in the future. They can be used right now if you're a young student looking for a job. They can be used for a couple reasons and they can be used in interviews all the time. It's really important that you do these things. So number one, what do you think number one is in preparing for an interview? Obviously dressing nicely and looking very good is one of the things that you have to do. But what do you think? The first thing you do when you meet someone, what do you do? Curious what you think. Because this is the way it is in the United States. I'll let you take time to answer. You can guess. Guess away. And thank you for the hearts. <laughs> that's a funny comment. <laughs> Don't stress. That's a good one. Don't get stressed out. Take deep, breath, deep, deep breaths and relax. That's important. Smiling is very important. Make a good first impression. That's kind of close to what I was, I was hinting at. So you say hello, but in the United States especially, you shake hands. So you shake hands with someone during an interview. Might be different in the country you live in. I know in Japan you bow. Um, depending on where you are, you might do something different to greet. But in the United States, we shake hands. So that's the first thing I did today was I shook the hands of the people interviewing me. And I said, thank you for seeing me. I, uh, you can say thank you. You can ask them how their day is. And usually you just have a short conversation. Um, this is common in the United States. You just talk about what you did today, what, how you're doing, what things um, you have planned for that week. You kind of make small talk and um, shake hands. We don't hug in the United States. Um, only if you're seeing a friend or someone you're close to, you hug. Um, I, we hug um, our friends and we hug in conversation if you know the person very well, but not in interviews. You don't hug in interviews. You just shake hands. So that's number one. That's the number one thing that I advise you on if you do this. And have a conversation with someone if you're applying for a job in the United States or applying for school and you have to do an interview for your college. I know many Ivy League schools do interviews for their universities. Number two is interview questions. 
Be sure to research. Go on Google and look up the top 10 questions that someone asks you in an interview because there's a good chance those questions will be asked. I've looked that up before and they get asked all the time. From what experience do you have to really weird questions like if you have a specific personality, how would you explain yourself? What is your personality? I got asked that question today. I got, what is your personality? And I thought to myself, oh no, what do I say? I didn't know. I didn't prepare for that question. Um, I ended up answering it well. Usually you have to just be very calm, relaxed. If they ask you a question you don't know the answer to, think about it for a little bit, take a deep breath, and then give the best answer you can. Give the best answer you can. If you start to get stressed and sweat, then it'll be obvious that you weren't prepared. And what did I answer for my question? I said that I'm very outgoing, but I said in my time in college, I've learned that listening is more important than speaking. Um, if you're a good listener, then you are very valuable. I know AJ talks about this, but I said I'm an outgoing listener, that I'm outgoing, but I love to listen to people and hear what they say and hear what they have to say. And then I think about what they say and then I do something about it. I do what they tell me to do or I do what needs to be done to f solve a problem. So I said I was an outgoing listener. Um, I was going to say I'm a leader, but I thought that might be too easy to say, that I'm a, saying I'm a leader, a lot of people might say this. So I said I'm an outgoing listener. To be outgoing means to be very excited, you're extroverted, you're very energetic and talkative. So that's another thing, prepare, get ready when you answer, when people ask you questions, really look up the questions they might ask you. Um, why didn't I say hard worker? Um, I could have said that, but I, for the interview that I, for the job that I was working hard for, I didn't want to, the interview, okay, so I'll explain. The interview I have later today, I will probably say something like a hard worker or a leader, but the interview I had earlier today, they want someone who's very talkative and outgoing, so I made sure to say what would make them happy. Um, so you sometimes you want to tailor. To tailor means to kind of form your answers around the person that's asking them and what the position is for. So you want to answer questions based on the position you're applying for. So perfect example would be marketing. If you're applying for a marketing job, you want to talk about more marketing-based things. If you're applying for an engineering job, you want to talk about engineering and answer questions based on what they look for in an engineer or a doctor or so on and so forth, whatever job you're applying for. So then number three, and this one's obvious, this one's very obvious, dress better than you expect. So even if it's an interview with someone at your school, you're just applying for a job at your school, it's a small job, dress really nicely because if you do not look good, then they judge you instantly. You want to make sure your clothes look nice, you're pre ironed, um, dress, dress appropriately. I always, there's a phrase in the U.S. to um, always dress better than you'd expect because if you dress nice, more nicely than everyone else at something, whether it's an event or a job opportunity, you still look great. It doesn't matter if you look better than everyone else, but if you look, if you don't dress as nicely, then you look pretty bad. It makes you look like you're lazy, makes it look like you don't know what you're doing, that you're disheveled. Um, so yes, dress to impress. Great, dress to impress. You want to impress people. Make a good first um, re first um, opinion of yourself and make a good first impression of yourself. So that one's easy. That one's really easy. And then number four, which I had talked about, was all – this is after your interview. Number four is always write a thank you letter. So if someone interviews you – it's really easy to just say, thank you, I don't need any help anymore. I'm good, I don't need any help. Well, my advice is, number four, always write a thank you letter. So email them and say, thank you for meeting with me. Thank you for taking the time out of your day to see me. I look forward to hearing from you in the future and hope that I am a great fit or I would be a great employee for you. Thank you very much. And then you write your name. But even a small message reminds them who you are because they because they could have been interviewing lots and lots of people so they see this and they're like oh Phil I remember him 
so it m might remind you who they uh, it re might remind them who you are and it also looks good it makes it look like you um, took the time to really care about them and thank them for their time so that's my advice that's my advice for interviewing those are the things that I think a lot of people don't really think about that they d aren't really aware of or they forget to do so this is my advice for you really pay attention to these things it's very important that you do these things so my interview went well just so you know my interview went well it was um, very easy it kind of got me ready for my interview later today and I hope I got the job we'll see if I got the job but um, I did all these things and I hope that it helps so that's my advice for interviewing now we have to get into our normal lesson which is our TOEFL lesson so I talked your ear off this is a common phrase in the United States talking someone's ear off means you talk a lot to them you talk and talk and talk so let's start our TOEFL lesson for today so my TOEFL word is a word that I used a lot in the essays on the AMP English course I use this word all the time in writing um, it's one of my favorite words actually I think I use it too much sometimes but the word is acquire to acquire something to acquire does anyone know what the word acquire means does everyone un know the word acquire have they heard the word acquire acquire I will wait find out thank you for the hearts you guys are pressing like crazy I will wait. Let's find out if you guys know the word. Okay, no. Nope. Okay, so people have heard this word. This is great. Um, I wanted to do this word because some people haven't. Some people have heard this word. But it's important that you know this word because it's used a lot. Um, out of all the words I've taught you um, in the last month and a half, I would say this word's used the most. Um, you will hear it in business if someone acquires assets. You will hear it in skills if someone acquires new skills. You will hear it with just getting things. Someone acquires new things. Someone acquires a toy. Someone acquires a new car. You might acquire, um, you can acquire a lot of different things. And what it means is to get or come into possession of something. It means that you get that thing. So you can either buy it, you can be given it. Some people acquire money when their family members die. They get money out of the will. AJ uses this word a lot. Um, AJ and I both use this word a lot. So I'm sure you hear it all the time, all the time, all the time. So it means to get something or to achieve something or to receive something. So to acquire, to acquire means you get it and you own it now. It's in your possession. So I use this a lot when I teach skills in the AMP English course. You will hear this a lot. You'll get sick of me saying you acquire a new skill or you acquire a new asset. Um, and so you will hear this a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot. So I've got a couple practice sentences for you. I really wanted to teach you this word because it's really important that you know it. Um, if there's one word I want you to practice the most in your speech, it's this word, um, just because it's used so much. And it makes you sound intelligent. It sounds better than, I get something. It, sound, it sounds a lot cooler to say, I acquired something. I received it. I got something, but I acquired it. Doesn't it sound better than, I got something or I get something? I think it pers Personally, I think it sounds better. I think it makes you sound like a native English speaker. Um, it's a very powerful word, but it's very simple to use, too. So, I will give you my practice sentences, and then I will take questions. Oh, cool, and it's, it's very similar in French. Um, good, good. That makes it easy for you. Um, so, let's go ahead and get started with my words. In 20 years of collecting cars, you're collecting cars, you're just getting, you keep getting and getting cars. I have acquired 300 of them. So let's pretend I've been collecting cars for 20 years. I've been collecting cars for 20 years. And I have acquired 300 cars. So I own 300 cars. I have 300 cars. That's a lot of cars. But I've been collecting and collecting and collecting. So I have acquired all of these cars over 300 or over uh, 30, 20 years, not over 300 years. That would I would be dead. 
But I acquired these cars over 20 years, and now I have 300 cars.